to Matthew chapter number 15. And I want to preach on the thought of the power of persistence. The power of persistence. You know, the battle doesn't always go to the strongest. The battle doesn't always go to the most fierce. It'll just go to the one who doesn't quit. Matthew chapter number 15, beginning in verse number 21. Then Jesus went thence and departed into the coasts of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with a devil. But he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not meet to take the children's bread and cast it to dogs. And she said, Truth, Lord. Yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from the master's table. And Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. You know, verse 27 could have read, And she said, You offended me, and I'm never coming back. He just called her and her daughter dogs. It wasn't even legal for them to hang out and talk to each other. Let's pray and we'll get into the message. Father, we love you. Thank you for your word. I pray, Lord, that you would bless the reading and preaching of your word tonight. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. You can be seated. This lady had a lot of excuses. She, you know, and if you need excuses, come see me. I make great ones. And um, this lady, she, she, could, she had excuses. She had reasons. Jesus insulted her. And by the way, he explained himself ahead of time. A lot of people don't understand this, but if you read verse 24, you realize that Jesus' ministry on earth was not to Gentiles. Jesus' ministry on earth was to the Jew first. Then after his death, burial, and resurrection, now there was a Gentile here and there along the way, but his primary focus was to the Jew for the purpose of presenting himself as their Messiah and being rejected even unto death, even unto the death of the cruel Roman cross that he might die by bloodshed that whosoever will Amen. may come. Right. Jesus, throughout his earthly ministry, listen, it was a Jewish focused ministry. He even told his disciples when they sent him out two by two, of the many disciples that he had, he chose out 70. And he told me, I don't even want you to go into, uh, you're not going to go into any of the areas of Samaria. You're not going to go talk to any Gentiles. Not going to do any of that. We're going, and it was all about reaching the Jews. You read the book of Matthew. It is a Jewish book about Jesus reaching the Jews. About Jesus being qualified to be the Jewish Messiah. So Jesus, he ignores this woman's request. Then when the disciples are like, Send her away, man. She's bothering us. Jesus in verse 24 says, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Hey, I'm just here to reach some Jews. But then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. He had already ignored her. He'd already explained why he wasn't going to help her. Now she says, she's on her face. I mean, listen, we just think, it doesn't matter what I do, how I live, what I'm doing, whatever. Hey, as soon as I snap my fingers, my Jesus genie in the bottle is going to hop out and answer all my requests. 
She asked for help. He ignored her. The disciples got in on it and said, send her away. He said, I ain't here for you. I'm here for the Jews. This is a Canaanite woman. We don't have to mess with them. She's down worshiping him and says, Lord, help me. And listen, this is not the American blue-eyed genie in the bottle Jesus that you know. Look what he says. It is not meat to take the children's bread and cast it to dogs. He said, I've got something to give, but it's not for you. You are dogs. And she said, truth, Lord. She didn't get up and walk away. She didn't run off crying. She loved her daughter enough to be persistent. And she said, that's fine. Truth. There's got to be some crumbs falling off this table somewhere. And that's what I'll take. And Jesus immediately said, you can have whatever you want. And what she wanted was the reason she had stayed. And the reason she stayed was to have her daughter healed. So her daughter was healed immediately. Can I tell you tonight, there is great power in persistence. Pray without ceasing. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. This little stop by the table and pause and rub a dub dub. Thanks for the grub. Amen. That ain't going to fly. God ain't doing nothing with that. She asked for help. He ignored her. The men who were assigned to help others ignored her and wanted her sent away. Jesus said, I'm not helping your kind. She said, help me. He said, you're a dog. I'll be a dog. But this dog's looking for some scraps. And she hung in there, guys. She hung in there. There were social reasons that she should have given up. There were hurt feelings that should have caused her to give up. There was out and out rejection that should have caused her to give up. But none of that was going to heal her daughter. So she hung in there. You know what makes me crazy? When somebody's praying for a family member and they give up. How, how do you give up on a family member? How do, you, how do you give up? Well, I gave them the gospel, so I'm just going to let them go to hell now. What kind of hatred do you have? Do you believe in hell? How can you really believe in hell and not stay after and after and after and after a loved one? How do you just give up? How do you just write them off? Do they deserve it? Yes. But if we love them, you never give up. I, I've, had, I've seen wives. Preacher, pray for my husband. I want him to come to church so bad, preacher. Oh, preacher, you don't understand. Here I, I know all the words to all the hymns, preacher. And I'm here and I've got a prayer request, an unspoken. And you know what it is, preacher. And it's my husband, preacher. Oh, preacher, my husband, my husband. If only he would be holy like I am. And if only he could get spiritual like I am. And if only he could be here and be the leader he's supposed to be. And be all that stuff. All of a sudden, dude comes to church. And it takes... And he goes home and is like, hey, we're going to start having some changes around here. Next thing you know, she's out of church. Hey, it's play day when you're the most spiritual one. It's play day. You look real good when you're like, oh, I'm just trying to be spiritual. Everybody feels sorry for me because my, my spouse, they, you know, rrr, rrr, rrr. you look all spiritual then. When they show up, you ought to be on your face thanking God. 
And if they catch on and they decide they want to start making some changes, you have to suck it up, buttercup, and make some changes. Our problem is we get jealous and we get offended because we like being the spiritual one. When you're living with somebody that's sorry, it's easy to be the spiritual one. But when all of a sudden they get right and start getting right and start making some real changes in their lives, all of a sudden it puts pressure and makes people uncomfortable. Well, were your prayers sincere or not? Did you want your husband, your wife, your kids, your parents? Did you want them to get spiritual or not? Did you want them to serve the Lord? Did you want them to get right or not? Because now all of a sudden, they're reading in the Word and they're realizing that, wow, you was all spiritual a minute ago, but hey, what about this thing? And what about that thing? Why was it so different when you came home from church like, you're so sorry and you could have come and been the man and you could have done this and that. Hey, why was it okay for you to rag them on everything that they were doing wrong, but they point out something on you and you're ready to walk out? Hang in there, baby. Hang in there. Be persistent. There's power in persistence. And we ought to rejoice. We ought to give God the glory. Go, go, go over to Luke uh, 18. Luke 18. In Luke 18, right at the very beginning of the chapter, Jesus is talking here and, and, he's, and he's having to wrap things in parables. And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Okay, so we know because we have verse 1 what the parable is about. It's about continuing in prayer and not giving up, not fainting. Okay, they didn't have verse 1, they got verse 2. And as Jesus taught, he says, There was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of mine adversary. And he would not for a while. But afterward, he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest by her continually coming she weary me. He said, I'm just tired of hearing. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to give her what she wants so she'll quit bothering me. And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge saith. And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? You know, Jesus says, you keep praying because we can trust God to do what he's supposed to do. We can trust God. But when Jesus comes, is he going to find us doing what we're supposed to do? Is he going to find faith? He gets after the disciples over and over again. Where is thy faith? How is it that you have no faith? They're in the boat. Oh man, it's a storm. The waves are all up and everything. Oh Lord, carest not thou that we perish? Oh ye of little faith. Where is thy faith? Lord, can you help us to grow our faith? If you had the faith of a mustard seed. He said, if you had the faith of a mustard seed. You can move mountains. You got nothing. They say, can you increase our faith? What faith? You don't have this much faith. Why is it that we expect God to do for us and we don't think we need to do anything for God? You think that's going to meet out in the end? We can trust God to do His part. Bless God, God ought to be able to trust us to do our part. And He told us to pray. He told us not to give up. He told us to be faithful. Through the Holy Spirit, through Paul, he told us that uh, we're to quit like men. Men don't 
quit. You say, I know some men that quit. They, that wasn't a man. That was a boy in a big body. Quit you like men. So when do I quit? When the stinking job's done, that's when you quit. Persistence. Persistence. Keep going. Keep going. Don't give up. Yeah, I, I use this outline in, 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 a, in a several other portions of Scripture. Mark 5 is one of my favorites with Jairus' daughter and the woman with the issue of blood comes. But here are the things that will make you quit. Distractions. Delays, disappointments, and doubters. You'll be trucking along good, and here comes that disappointment. And man, you're going to be willy-nilly all over the place. Next thing you know, you're not serving God anymore. You didn't go off and do some bad things. You're doing good things. You're just not doing the best things. Distractions will get you. Delays. Well, God didn't answer my prayer. Of course he did. He either said no or he said not now. But hopefully you're not ignorant enough to quit. It might be just about to get good. Man, you just got to learn to hang in there. I wish God would just work to quit out of a bunch of stinking Baptists. The only thing Baptists need to quit is quitting. Delays, man. We just we don't want God. Lord, I I just I trust you, Lord, and in your perfect timing, you know, as long as that timing's now. I read in the book, Tribulation Work with Patience. I'm good being impatient, okay? I'm just gonna be impatient, but I don't complain about it. I'll tell you what else will happen. Disappointments. I was talking to a young lady just a couple hours ago. Talk to her, listen. I didn't talk to her, I listened to her for an hour and a half yesterday. And today it's health problems, family problems. One daughter's sick, another daughter's sick. Mama's crazy. All these problems going on. All these things mounted up legal problems, government problems. We got this kind of everywhere problem, problem. She said, What should I do? I said, Do right and don't quit. Don't give up. Just keep doing right. And keep going. It's about to get good. Now you got to do right. Give God something to work with. But don't quit. Don't quit. That's not a good chapter in your life. I like. I remember when I was a kid, and I would read chapter books. Every chapter told a different part. I hated a boring chapter, but I really hated a sad chapter. Man, I know a lot of people writing some stinking sad chapters right now. Hey, I'm telling you, it's time to close out. If you're in the middle of a sad chapter, if you're in the middle of a sorry chapter, you're in the middle of, of some crazy chapter, it's just time to close out that chapter, honey, and start the next one. Disappointments will knock you out of the water. Disappointments will get you down. And when those disappointments happen, listen, everybody needs a helping hand. Always check on the end of your arms first because God put two of them there. But if you get to a place where you can't help yourself anymore, get some help. But be careful that you don't go to the doubters. Because the last thing you need after some disappointment is to hang out with some doubters. I told you. That's why, that's why I quit going to church. Because God didn't answer my prayers and this and that. That's why. Let's just go get drunk. Yeah, that's going to help. Go buy a case of Bud Dumber. Let's just go get high. And, and uh, now we're broke. Lost some brain cells. And we still have every stinking problem we had at the beginning. Now we just have no money, fewer brain cells, and no testimony. Listen, pray for losers. Pray for losers. Help them if you can. But don't buddy up with a bunch of losers. You are now or you soon will be exactly what your friends are. You better find some godly people that you can trust that God is using to do something. You say, oh, I'm going to go talk to them. They got some free time. No, they got some free time on purpose. They, they got some free time because they ain't doing nothing. And, and listen, in this world, 
There is stuff from do to do from dark until dark, and you have to go to bed with stuff left undone. This is a busy world, guys. And you find somebody sitting around doing something, you mark it down. Something wrong with that person. Either God is not using them for a reason, or they're not being used of God for some reason. But I just look and wave at those, hey man, I'm for you, okay? And then I go find, when I need help, I go find the busiest person there is. If, I, if you're one of the people I call on, you understand that. You go, I'm busy. Why don't you call somebody else? Because you're busy. I know you're going to do something. People got free time. They free time on purpose. They're lazy. They're sorry. Even God don't want to use them no more. They out of the program. They're on the sideline. And that might hurt your feelings, but if it does, why don't you get with the program? So you're not being nice. I didn't, God didn't call me to be nice. He called me to preach the whole counsel of God. And the whole counsel of God in Matthew chapter number 15 and where we are, Luke 18, says don't quit. Right. Keep praying. Keep doing. God's going to do his part. But hey, when Jesus shows up, is he going to find us doing our part? God's looking for some people that won't quit. You know why stinking pit bulls are so scary? Because they don't stop. I hate getting bit by a stupid yippy dog. I ain't never been bit by no pit bulls. But I've been bit by some poodles. I've been bit by a chihuahua. I wanted to kick him into the wall wall. If I go up on a dog's front porch, hey, that's his house. I got to have enough sense just to do something back off and get out of the way. He's doing what he's supposed to do. Let a dog come in my yard, I will jack slap him. A pit bull's scary because he won't let go. Snapping turtle won't let go. Somebody told me, snapping turtle won't let go until, until the sun goes down. No, you take your pocket knife out and cut his neck off. He lets go pretty quick. We saw that at the lake. Amen. <laughs> the Bible talks about us being able to take some crowns and lay them down and cast them at our Savior's feet. You can study up on those crowns. You know what there's no crown for? Quitting. Ain't no crown for quitting. Ain't no crown for having hurt feelings. Ain't no crown for giving up, giving out, giving in, giving over. It's crowns for just serving the Lord. Let me encourage you, get in on it early and stay in on it. I don't care if everybody else quits. When we started college, I had 23 people in my freshman class. We graduated six. And of those six, ain't all of them in the ministry today. A couple of my favorites ain't around no more. I don't hate those guys, but I don't hang with those guys. I don't hate those guys, but I don't go to them for help. I don't hate those guys. I don't even, in fact, I love those guys. And I pray for them to get back in. The world can get their people to work the warehouses. The world can get their people to take care of stuff. Many are called, few are chosen. If God chose you, you need to suck it up and keep going. And there's going to be times when we slow down. There's going to be times when we limp. And times you might be on injured reserve for a minute. Don't give up. Stay in the fight. All of us, man, our, it ought to be our goal to be like the Apostle Paul who said, I, kept, I finished the fight, I fought a good fight, I kept the faith, I finished my course. In Hebrews 12, it just says, for us to run with patience, the race set before us. My race isn't your race, and your race isn't mine. I mean, here through, through our church family, we're kind of on the track together. This part of our race is, is together. 
So let's go soul winning together. Let's tell people about Jesus together. Let's, let's do stuff together. Let's win people together. Let's reach out together. Let's encourage together. But then if we're not meeting together, you still got stuff to do. I still got stuff to do. It's not just stuff. It's responsibility. And there's lost people and there's hurting people that need somebody to keep praying. That little girl had nothing to do in this story except be possessed. Her mama did all the doing on her behalf. Her mama overtook the, the customs of not being allowed to hang out with Jewish people. She overcame the insults. She overcame the rejection. And this little girl who did nothing was the beneficiary of her mama's faith. Do you remember when the four men lowered the paralytic man down to Jesus because there was no room? You go study that. Jesus saw their faith and healed him. I just wonder who would be the beneficiary if God sees our faith. Well, we got to have faith and we got to be faithful. The power of persistence. Persistence moves the power of God. Don't give up. Father, we love you. We thank you for the day. Lord, I pray that you'd bless this reading and preaching of your word. I pray that you'd use us in an extraordinary way or faithfully in very ordinary ways. We have a lot of prayers. We have a lot of requests. We have a lot of need, but we also have a lot of potential. Help none of us to be quitters. Help us to move forward doing your work and your will, your way. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.